you know, the Holy Spirit, He's going to move and do what He wants to do. And we have one of two choices. We can either go with that and we can experience His, um, His awesome power and we can experience what He wants to do in us, to us, through us, or we can choose to refuse Him. We have examples of both of that in the Word of God where people choose to let Him move in us and we have examples of people refusing every time if we're willing to step out of our comfort zone and we're willing to allow him to move in us and through us, we get to experience God here on earth. But all too often we let fear step in. We let doubt step in. And then we, we stifle the spirit. We stifle what he wants to do in us and through us. And, you know, God's really been putting that on, on the, the heart of the leadership here at Church on the Rock to not stifle what God is doing. He's given us word after word after word that he's wanting to do something bigger. He's wanting to do something greater. And he's wanting to do it right here with us. How awesome is that? He's telling us he wants to move big with us. That tells us that we are important enough to the creator of the universe that he wants to come and meet us here. Not only does he just want to meet us here, not only does he want to dwell here, he wants to move here. He wants to let us experience miracles and signs and wonders because that's going to start drawing us closer to him. It's like what I was talking about whenever we were praying over people up here. You know how easy it would be for Nancy to call up Brandon and Brandon to go, Ooh, uh, no, I don't, I, I, I'm not ready for that. You know, that's scary. I don't want to get up in front of everybody because... What if I messed it up? Well, it's, I, I kind of equate that with, with Moses at the burning bush. It's burning, but it's not being consumed. And it sparks Moses' attention. And he goes up to it and he's like, what is going on here? And God starts speaking to him. And he says, Moses, take your shoes off where you're standing is holy ground. So he kicks his shoes off. He's like, all right, uh, God's speaking to me in a bush that's not being consumed. Time to start listening, all right? But Moses, in and of himself, a human being speaking with God, as God's telling him what to do, he starts to kind of get a little fearful. He's like, I don't know about this, man. I, I, I think you got the wrong person. And God's like, you know, can you imagine what God's thinking whenever Moses is telling him, I can't do this or I can't do that? And we have God here that, that literally creates the wind. Kind of like that conversation between God and, and Job. God starts saying, do you know where, where the, the waters from heaven come from? Do you know what's at the deep of the ocean? He's asking him these things because Job is trying to trying to literally give him a, a, an excuse. He's, he's, he's doing things in his own thoughts and his own power. It's like, I created the brain cells that give you the ability to speak and, and think in the first place. If I'm calling you to it, then I'm going to let you do it. Don't sweat it. Don't stress it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. So Brandon, he comes up here in faith knowing that Nancy hears from God, knowing that when he gets up here, it's not about him in the first place. He's just going to be obedient and do what God told him to do and watch God move. That's where we all have got to get to, to the understanding that God is greater than we are and we just have to be obedient and do what he's telling us to do. So, 
I love that he mixed things up for us. I love that he does that. And I love that this church is willing to let him do it. Has anybody in here been in a church that the Holy Spirit started to move and you could feel it, man, you could feel it, and then they're like, nope, service must go on. God, you wait. This is, you know, we have this planned out, God. You're, you don't get an opportunity to mess up what we've started here, okay? That's devastating. It's devastating. And one thing that I love about this church is they refuse to let that happen. And I pray that we will constantly refuse to let our own idea of what it should look like hinder God's move. And the more that we all corporately come into the understanding that God knows better than we do and has a better plan and better timing for things than we do, then we're going to see a move bigger, stronger, greater, mightier, and really, truly start to impact every single thing around us. We've all got to get into this frame of mind that we let God do what he wants when he wants to do it and put ourselves aside, our fears, our shame, our doubt, our worries, our self-concern, concern of what it may look like for us, what other people may think about us. You can do the very best that you could ever do, and people still aren't going to think that you're doing a good job. It's just the way it is. You know, who cares what people think? So, this morning, I got an opportunity to sit down with Azrael and and went on and talked to Azrael about the baptism and what that means to her, what it looks like, and, and what God has to say about it. And I realized that the time that we had to sit down with her wouldn't let us scratch the surface. I mean, it just doesn't let us scratch the surface. And the reason for that is because the purpose and the plan and the design behind every little thing that God has for us is so deeper than our minds can even begin to comprehend. But he wants us to comprehend. He wants us to ask him for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to be able to start processing through these things because it's right here, right now, where we are on this planet that is preparing us for eternity, preparing us for what we're going into. It's not just this. It's not just where we are today. It's not where we're going to be in 10, 15, 20 years. It's where we're going to be in 20,000 years, in 50,000 years, in a million years from now. The Word says that we're going to rule and reign with Him if, if, we choose to follow his command. If we choose to live out. He's, you see, the, the commands that he's giving us, he requires things from us. Believe it or not, even though John 3.16 says that he loves us so much that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in me will not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Yeah. That is 100% correct. There's nothing wrong about that. Nothing. Nothing. But how you never perish and how your everlasting life is going to be determined is by your relationship with God today. Your relationship with God right here on this earth. Your willingness to be obedient to Him in the things that you like and in the things you don't like. There's a phrase that's been kind of going around through some of the, the study and the, uh, the devotion that we've been doing and the leaders, uh, the teachers meetings that we've been having and stuff is, is we're not going to protect you anymore from what the Word of God says. Let me explain to you what that means. I've been taught things in here. I've heard some of the same stories over and over and over and over and over. 
There are multiple things that I can quote out of here, that you can quote out of here, that we can all quote out of here, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it is the bread of life. But whenever we hit scripture that goes, whoa, man, that doesn't line up with what I've been taught. So let's just, eh, one more. Okay, okay, now this, this, this is back on track. This is back where we need to be with what everybody teaches. My friends, the words on these other two pages are God's word as well. Sometimes the words on these other two pages are going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes they're going to make you question your own theology make you question what you've been taught. And that's okay. You know why? Because we could literally go down through here and do a word-by-word Bible study, verse study, scripture study, and get into the Greek and the Hebrew, get into the ancient languages every single day of our life, and still on the day we die, not have a complete understanding of who God truly is and what he really thinks and how he really feels. But we have to still do our very best and not skip over the things that make us feel uncomfortable whenever it says that our God is a loving God. He is a loving God. And whenever it says he is a just God, he is a just God. Whenever it says that he himself brought punishment, He himself brought punishment. When he himself brought deliverance, he's the one that brought deliverance. But if we only focus on the grace and the mercy of God, we're not going to know him fully. The word says that a good father still does discipline his children. And if you don't discipline your children, then you hate your children. And it says that our God is our heavenly Father, Jesus, time and time again, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one that's talking about the Father. And if a good father disciplines his children, then we can't expect to not get disciplined. We can't expect that all the bad things in the world that happen are all from Satan. Because I promise you, God has started just wrecking me with time and time again in here where he says, I brought destruction. I brought death. I brought pain. All these things. But why? Why? You think, why, God? Why would you bring these things? This doesn't sound like the God that I was raised to to know and understand. It doesn't. No teachers, no Bible teacher, no pastor, no preacher stood up here and said these things to me. So it's foreign to me. I only have been hearing about things that, that makes me feel good whenever I come to church. You know, I've heard, turn from your wicked ways. We should absolutely turn from our wicked ways. We absolutely should. What I'm finding is because if we don't, Our Heavenly Father is going to do things, allow things to happen, put things into motion that's going to cause me pain to turn me back to Him. And it's not the devil. It's not Satan. It's not all these other demons that that are doing these things, these evil spiritual beings. It's my loving Heavenly Father that lets these things happen so that I will turn back to Him. I'll tell you a story about about me and about my mom, who's an awesome mom. She is very, very awesome. But we lived in this little little bitty house growing up. And I remember this. This may be one of my very first memories ever, honestly. That's how small I was. She was cooking green beans on the stove. 
And it was, it was one of those old stoves, like the whole top of it gets hot, you know? And she was, there was these stairs at, right by the stove. Which it must have went to a cellar. I don't ever remember having a basement as a kid growing up. But I remember these stairs. And I'm walking up to the stove, and I'm trying to reach up there. And she says, she tells me, no, don't. Don't touch that. It's very hot. It'll burn you. Me, maybe I did or maybe I didn't know what hot meant. I probably did. But I do remember, I bet it's not that hot. Anybody else ever been there before? Is it just me? No, oh, I, I got one person. And my mom tells me, don't touch it, it's hot. And so I pull my hand away, just long enough for her to turn around and start walking away, you know, and then I'm like, start reaching back up. Well, my mom heard from the Holy Spirit, or maybe it was just a mother's intuition, or maybe she just knew how I operated. So she got about halfway down, she turns around, comes right back up, because she just knew that moron's going to touch that stove anyway, you know? And so she goes up, and my hand's almost there, and she grabs it, boom. And like any good, loving, caring parent would do, she took that hand and smacked it. And I'm like, ha, ah, that hurt. Does that make her not a good, loving, caring, compassionate mother? It makes her a very good, loving, caring, compassionate mother. But she caused me pain and discomfort to teach me that if that hand went on that stove, it would have blistered. And that, that skin would have peeled off. And it would have been extremely, excruciatingly painful for a long time. Maybe I would have lost feeling in that hand. So I had to experience a little bit of pain from a loving mother to not go through the much more excruciating pain that I would have went through otherwise. She could have just said, all right, genius, go ahead, touch it. Would I have learned the same lesson? I would have definitely learned the lesson. But it would have been a whole lot worse, and she wouldn't have been such a loving and caring and compassionate woman. She wouldn't have been the one to administer the pain. She wouldn't have been the one to administer the pain. She told me not to touch it. But she administered pain to me so that I didn't have to endure much more pain. That is our loving Father. And sometimes we do go through things that he puts us through so that we won't go through even more. Okay? He's a loving father. Let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, God, reveal to us today yourself. Reveal to us your character, begin to real, reveal to us your character and your desire for us, your heart for us, Lord, and open our minds to understand who you are and what your desire is for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you've heard us say before that where we are as a church body God is calling us to something different. He has structured this body to something different. It's not an accident that you're sitting in this room today or watching online. It's not an accident. There are pockets of believers all across the country and all across the world that are listening for his ear that are listening for his words. He's opening our ears. He's opening our eyes so that we can do what he says to do. So we can be what he says to be. 
this church is going somewhere different. It's going deeper. It's going to be challenging. We're going to challenge you guys. We're going to challenge ourselves. We are challenging ourselves big time. If you want to know him more intimately, if you want to know him better, if you want to know him closer, if you want to know why he's created you to be who you are and to do what he's created you to do, then you're probably in the right place. If you do just want to sit there and you just want to be able to come to church on Sunday and listen to some good music and, and listen to a pastor that's not going to challenge you to change, then this is not the place for you. It's not. I'm sorry. Um, if that's a shock to you, if you've never heard a pastor say that before, then uh, really I don't know what to tell you. I don't. Um, if, you, if you're sitting there and you're like, wow, that guy's lost his mind because I'm a tithing member of this church. I help keep this church going monetarily. I will tell you, we very much appreciate your tithe. We very much appreciate your offering. But it's not your tithe and offering that keeps this church going. It's just simply not. It never has been and it never will be. We want you to so that you will be blessed by doing what God has called you to do. But it's not a need that we, we need you in that way. The way we need you is to come into the full understanding of who God has created you to be and for you to walk that out. And we are going to do whatever we can to help you get there, to help you achieve those things. That is what we're here for. We're here to break this down for you in a way that you can, you can understand and you can apply it to your life. And we're not going to skip over the hard things. In fact, we're probably going to dig harder into the hard things because you've heard enough of the good things. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you can sit here and quote all of God's mercy and grace and love and kindness, we're not going to steer away from that. But we've got to come to a more full understanding of who he is and of what this truly does say. Unfortunately, there's going to be times where, where I mess things up. I know this from past experiences. <laughs> there, there may be times where you guys will have to call me out. Maybe I'm getting a little too zealous and a little too um, hyper and extreme, and you guys are like, tone it down some. That, that may happen. In fact, it probably almost definitely will happen. Um, but I am going to be going a little off script. I am, and I think that that's going to be necessary. We had lunch with Scott last Sunday. And, uh, and had kind of a similar conversation that we had in, in one of our teachers' meetings with Pastor Rod. And uh, he pointed out the fact that, um, that I have really kind of held on like a little uh, safety net or a, a little safety blanket, you know, or a binky or something like that. I've kind of just in the past regurgitated teachings from other pastors. And that's not that that's a bad thing. You know, I mean, we all learn and we, we pour out of our overflow. You, you try to take in as much of the word as you can. You process it. You ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want to teach through this? And then you teach it. I mean, you teach out of your overflow. Um, but I leaned on that too much. And I came to the understanding the Holy Spirit revealed to me, essentially through Scott and through Rod, that... Um, that the reason that I was doing that was because this pulpit had been entrusted to me. And I don't take that lightly. In fact, I take it as probably the most serious challenge um, ever in my whole life. And I would say next to being a father or next to being a husband, but honestly delivering the word of God, there it comes with very strict, um, very serious repercussions if you do it your own way instead of his way. Very significant. It says that we will be judged 
um, much more harshly. And that's something, that's a charge that I don't take lightly. And so when I was entrusted with this pulpit and entrusted to bring God's word to you guys, I'm just going to be real with you. I felt like I, I in and of myself, I, I'm not good enough to do that. I'm not smart enough to do that. I'm not equipped enough to do that. And just like Moses made a million excuses of why I can't do that. It's scary. It is scary to know that I'm not just being judged by you guys. I'm being judged by the creator of the universe. That's scary. And so I would, I would just kind of duplicate these teachings because I didn't want to dishonor the leadership of this church. And I knew if I teach these things, I'm not going to offend people. I'm, well, probably still going to offend people, but not that much, you know? I'm not going to run off the whole crowd of everybody there. They're still going to have a church left after I, after I step down, you know? But I had to go through a season, a season of growth, a season of change, a season of, of understanding that I don't have time to do that anymore. We don't have time to do that anymore. And I have to just dig into here with everything that I am and ask the Holy Spirit to just show me, just show me. You're still going to hear things that you hear from maybe other teachers, other pastors, other preachers, whatever. But I, what I'm telling you is it's going to come a lot more from what the Holy Spirit's leading. And as I guess a disclaimer, I... Uh, I guess I apologize if it if it comes off as just boom, too crazy. If you want to come up to me afterwards and be like, dude, you're off the deep end. Go for it. That's fine. I can handle it. But uh but we are going deeper. We're going deeper and we are going to challenge you. So please be ready for that. All right. So what God was, has really been showing me is that he's a whole lot different than my preconceived ideas have led me to believe my whole life in the way that I've been taught to believe my whole life. So this is just going to start touching on things that we're going to get a whole lot deeper into. I'm going to kind of set a stage. I don't have time to go through everything today, but today we're setting a stage. Um, the other week, Scott taught, and he had so much stuff. And he's like, man, I should have done, like, I should have asked for, like, a second time around. And I'm like, dude, we're not going anywhere. So you just, you just keep it coming. You know what I mean? And, um, and so that's what you're going to start hearing. It's almost like watching a TV show that's a series, and it leaves you on a cliffhanger. But it gives you the opportunity to think about and regurgitate all the stuff that, that was in that one message, right? That was in that one teaching. Does anybody in here watch The Chosen? It's, it's an outstanding show. And every time it's like, ah, oh, come on. How can you leave it like that? Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So then you get to go back and you, and you get to binge watch everything else. Well, those the teachings that we're going into and where we're, where we're going as a church, what I ask you to do is not expect for, their, for our teachings to be a beginning, a nice, a nice little middle section, and then a, just a crisp, solid ending for our Sunday services. Because what you can expect is this to just continue to build and to build and to build. Try to, try to hang in there with us and just try to go because this is life. This is where we're going in life. This is what we're called to. So I'm going to start jumping into the um, knowing God, knowing the Father. Very good choice. 
Um, Becky, poor lady, she has to deal with me. Um, I'm always like, maybe I have a mess, maybe I have a, a title, maybe I don't. Almost never have a picture, and she's always does such an awesome job of finding something that that kind of goes along with exactly what we're doing. So that's amazing. The worship this morning was outstanding, Brittany. Thank you very much. And trying to scratch the surface of the Father. Like I said, we could, we could take our whole lives trying to do it. So trying to find where to start, there's not much of a starting place. You know, it's kind of like reading the book of John. Fortunately, he starts in the beginning. There was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything was formed. You know, and nothing that was formed that was, you know, it's like, do we go all the way back to the very beginning? You guys know the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and just start, learning the characteristics of God, learning the requirements of God, what he does lay out, why he lays it out. What does he command us to do? Why is it a commandment? Is it, is it for our benefit? Is it for him to just make rules over us? What, what's the point? The point is, is don't touch the stove because it's really bad for you. It's gonna hurt. That's the point. The good news is, is if you don't, you're not going to get hurt, you know? Do these things, and you're going to be blessed. Don't do them, and you will face the repercussions. But even facing those repercussions are going to turn us back to the Father's heart. So we view God as the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the God of all gods. And you're like, Nathan, <laughs> I'm good with king of kings. I'm good with lord of lords. I'm not good with God of all gods. Because he's the only God. Well, that's not what the Bible says. But I'll get into that more later. Or one of these guys will. But it is one thing that you, that whenever I heard it, I'm like, what? <laughs> the Bible doesn't say that. Sorry. The Bible doesn't say that. Yes, it does. Actually absolutely does so he's king of kings the lord of lords the ruler of all rulers he's also the judge he's also the father he's also the friend he's also the teacher he's so many things Brittany had a book the other day it was um, the names of god how cool is that? It goes over all these different names of God. And hopefully, we'll be able to start breaking all those down because within a name gives a description. You can understand who a person is by their name, by the name that's associated with them. The name that I want to focus on this morning is Father. And it is a... It, it is one of those names that we've come to be comfortable with. But the reason that, that I want to present a little bit of this today is because my daughter is getting baptized today. And talking with her about that, are you okay with me sharing some of what we discussed? Okay. Talking with her about that today one of the questions was, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to get baptized? What does it mean to you? And all of you out there, you're probably thinking, well, this is what it means to me. This is why, why I would want to get baptized. You know, we're supposed to get baptized. The Word tells us to get baptized. Some people even believe that if you don't get baptized, you don't go to heaven. And we know that that's not true. Um, but we do know that God tells us to get baptized. It is a requirement of us, but it's for our blessing. It's so that we will be blessed, so we will be able to walk in the fullness and the calling of God. 
we are supposed to get baptized so that we will be blessed. And one of the reasons that she wanted to get baptized was because she's also heard the verses where they're in front of God getting ready to be judged and he says depart from me for I never knew you and then they respond with but Lord but Lord we cast out demons in your name we did this we did this we did these things in your name that can be scary, right? Because if you just read it for surface, at the surface level, these people cast out demons in God's name and he's saying, depart from me for I never knew you. What kind of God is that? Let's dig a little bit deeper into that. These people that are casting out demons, supposedly casting out demons in his name, they weren't doing it to bring him glory. They were doing it to bring them glory. It was a pride thing. It was it's an all about me thing. It's a look at me and look at what I can do thing. That's what it was about. And God says that he gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. You want to be proud? You want to be prideful? You want, to, you want all these people to see that this is look at me, look at what I'm doing. God opposes that so much so that you have no place with him. You have no place with him. So, what he's saying, what he's telling us, what he's wanting to get across to us is that the, the purpose for the desire is not to have people look at you. The desire that he wants in your heart is when you do these things in his name, that he is the one that gets the glory, not us. That he gets the glory. And so how do we come to that place of desire where he gets the glory and not us? It's through a place of wanting to know him more, wanting to be in relationship with him, and that he's the only thing that matters. And we have to come to a place where we understand that he's the only thing that matters. We have to go through enough stuff in life that, that all of a sudden we realize, God, you're really all that truly matters. I want more of you. And if, if, if we don't focus on healing the sick and raising the dead and casting out demons, and we don't focus on, on just bringing in a million people into this church, we don't focus on those things, and all we focus on is the Father heart of God, we focus on the loving Father. We focus on honoring the God of the universe, the God that's over every other God, and we give him the honor and the glory and the praise that is due his name, and nothing else matters. We exist to please him, then healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, all these other things, drawing people in. They're going to be drawn in like a magnet, not because we're, we're saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's because we are so focused on him that he is permeating our life and he's oozing out of us and touching every single thing that we touch. That he's going before us. He's preparing the way for us. We're not preparing the way. He is. He's the one that's doing it. As we're drawing closer to him and getting just more of him and eating and devouring this word, every last drop of it, the good, the bad, the ugly... As we're getting into that and we're getting into him and wanting him to be in us and us in him and nothing else matters, that's whenever he's just going to go, Poof. that's what I wanted to see. Now I'm pouring out onto you. You want me? Yes, you're going to get me and you're going to get everything else. My spirit is going to flood you. My spirit is going to dive into you and just live in every aspect of you. And just watch what happens. But the second that you turn and you start focusing on, you walk up to the throne room, you don't have to wait for him to say, enter into my rest, my good and faithful servant. 
Because the word says that you can come boldly into the throne room of God. If you're going in there and you're like, uh, I don't know. What's that all about? I want to be walking in there going, God, you know, I've waited for this forever. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to be with you. It's not going to be about judgment. It's going to be about getting to spend eternity with the one that created us and loved us so much that he made us exactly who we are. Exactly right now. We can't be focused and worried on the stuff going on around us. We can't be focused and worried on, about, are we doing it right? The word says a righteous man stumbles seven times but gets back up. We're not going to do everything right. But don't focus on that. Focus on him and him alone. Christ and Christ crucified. Focus on God. That's it, and he's going to do all the rest. He's going to do all the rest. You won't have to worry. You won't have to fear. You won't have to stress. None of that stuff. It's just gone. It's just gone. You don't have to worry about it. Does that mean that you're not going to go through weird, hard times? Of course you're going to. But it's not going to matter if you're not even looking at it. You know what I mean? It's not going to matter if you're not looking at it. So, yes, our Father. As, as Azrael was talking, and she said, um, she said, you know, she, she had that, that concern, that worry. We've all had it. Every single one of us have had it. If you haven't had it, that's interesting. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it. And I don't know, that, that just, I know I have. I know I have. I think it's kind of human nature, and I think it, it is the enemy trying to lie to you that you're not good enough. Like Adam and Eve, all of a sudden realizing that they're naked and having to cover up their, their sin and their shame, you know? So, kind of like one of those things. But what I, what I kind of explained to her is the Father, He wants to be with you. He wants to spend that time with you. And I told her some of my favorite times are whenever my daughters just want to spend time with me. I just got to take her to the Grand Canyon and we spent several days together, just me and her. It was a blast because it was just us. You know, and she pretty much got anything she wanted whenever she wanted. Don't tell her mom. But the thing was, she was wanting to spend time with me. And because she wanted to spend time with me, I'm like, yep, we can do that. Yep, we'll go there. Yep, you can have that. Because at that point, you know, Anybody with children, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. That is who he is. That is who he is. God let us, Brittany and I, create these three beautiful children by his help. I didn't get to pick what they looked like. He did. I didn't get to pick what they would sound like, how they would walk, how they would talk the desires in their heart. I didn't get to pick those things. He picked them. How much more does he love them? It blows my mind because I don't think that anything could ever love my kids more than me. But he loves them so much more than me, you can't even tell that I love them. He loves them that much more. That's mind-blowing. And that's how much he loves you too. But how much better is our relationship going to be if she wants to learn about me. Hey, Dad, what were you like whenever you were my age? You know, what, what are the things that you like? And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and then you get to share and you get to get closer together. You get, to, you get to become more intimately known with one another. She knows me better, I know her better. And so our relationship is stronger, our relationship is better. That's who he is and that's what he wants with you. That's, that's exactly what it wants with you. All right. Um, we're getting ready to go into baptism. And whenever we close this, this meeting, we are going to give the announcements. So please do um, stick around, listen to the announcements, hear what's going on at Church on the Rock. If you hear anything that you're like, oh, that's cool, man. I want to be involved in that. I want to be part of that. Then let us know. 
let us know. There's information on the information counter out there um, that with different things that you can get connected with. You can, you can start being the hands and feet. You can start serving in different areas of the church, of the community, of your friends. Um, and even if you don't sign up for something out there, be thinking, how does God want to use me? What does God want to use me in? And on the announcements, there's going to be different things that may pique your interest. Um, and I just, I really encourage you to get involved. The more involved that we are with this community right here, the better that we're going to be able to serve our community with, the better that God's going to start moving through us. What is one of the main takeaways from John 17? It is, Jesus says that I pray that they will be one just as you and I are one. If we aren't doing life together, how can we be one just as Jesus is one with the Father? Right? It's, it's not very easy. But if we start doing life together, we start helping each other, serving each other, loving on each other, we're going to start fulfilling what Jesus was praying and asking the Father for. Um, also, uh, I know a lot of you give online, um, but we also have the, um, the offering and the tithe box on the back wall here and one back out in the foyer. Feel free to give that way. If anybody wants to give online but they don't know exactly how to do that, you can come and, and see the leadership here, and we'll talk you through that. It's pretty simple, too. It's actually super simple. Um, and, yeah, so after that, Azrael's getting ready to be baptized. She's going to give a little bit of her testimony with that so if y'all uh, would like to stay you are absolutely more than welcome to stay also the water is like 90 degrees so it's not going to freeze you to death so if anybody hasn't been baptized and you want to get baptized now's the time don't wait don't put it off if you have been baptized before but maybe it was as a kid or something and you feel that your relationship with God is so much deeper now it means so much more to you now then get rebaptized. If you don't have clothes, uh, an extra set of clothes, then just ride home wet. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. It'll dry. And it, leads, it makes me wonder if the people that came out to see John the Baptist in the wilderness, if they brought an extra set of clothes. I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think they had that many clothes. So, but if you do want to get baptized today, please come up. It is extremely important. It's extremely important, and it's absolutely outstanding. I got to baptize Cheyenne um, a couple years ago now. Man, that was powerful. That was such a good day. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. So let's just pray, and we will, uh, we'll close with the announcements and then some more worship, so you can feel free to stay and worship. And uh, once we get ready, we'll come up and and do the baptism, and then y'all, you know, you can be free to go, whatever. So. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, that you love us enough to put us right here where we are today for such a time as this. Thank you that you chose us. You wanted us. You do want us. And you will want us forever. Lord, help us to open up our minds to a greater and better understanding of you and who you are and your desires and your heart and why you ask us to do the things you ask us to do, Lord. Open our minds up to receive your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. God, help us to continue to process this word throughout this week. And help us to be ready to receive your word next week. Help us to not get turned away at, at uh, the challenges we receive, but help us to accept them with a joyful heart, Lord. God, I ask that you will reveal yourself to us in a new and mighty way, a new and more powerful way. And just continue to let your Holy Spirit minister to us this week. And help us to learn to be completely and totally 
obedient to you, God, in everything for our own good. We love you, Lord, and we pray these things in the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen.